we had such a great time in our last conversation talking about David Goggins. We wanted to come back this week and give you some more of that good energies and more of that good vibe and that positivity that will actually propel you into doing some of the things that you really want to do with your life. So between myself, the mindset coach, and my good friend over here, the consistency coach, we're going to balance mindset and consistency so that we can actually help you do the things that you want to do in your life. Now, Garfield, I kind of changed gears on you, brother. Change it. I know you did. I know you did David Goggins. And I'm telling you, it was such a good episode. But I changed gears and I said, I'm going to do female basketball players. Right. Mm -hmm. it's not a lot of people. We'll talk basketball all day long. And most most men, we like to talk men basketball. So why don't yeah. we talk female basketball? Right. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk female basketball. And though we're going to focus our attention on these two young ladies right here. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. But listen, we're not pitting them against one another. I want to show you how awesome they actually are because I don't think we really know because we didn't follow them like through their high school years and they track all the way up to the point where they're literally stars right now today. So if you can give me a minute, Garfield, I'm just going to spew some information out to you guys. That way you can have a good understanding. And take it away. I am, I am ears wide open. Listen. <laughs> So again, like I said, we're going to talk about Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, but first starting with Angel Reese. So Angel Reese born in, on May 6, 2002 out of Randallsdale, Randallstown, Maryland. Um, she attended St. Francis Academy in Baltimore. So in high school, she showcased like versatility, playing all five positions and leading her team to numerous victories, including multiple conference titles. Like that's something I hadn't seen since Magic Johnson did it for the Los Angeles Lakers, right? She also achieved several accolades, including being named the All-Metro Player of the Year by the Baltimore Sun. Reese chose the University of Maryland initially because of the proximity, right? It was close to home. Um, and a member on the coaching staff who pursued her early in her career. So in her freshman year, she earned Big Ten All-Freshman Team honors and later first team All-American Big Ten and All-Defensive Team honors in her sophomore year. Her ability to average constant double-doubles um, in, in, you know, in rebounds and points, it kind of helped her to solidify like the beginning of what's about to be an amazing uh, college career. So that said, then she decided to transfer to LSU um, because she wanted to be coached by a coach who could actually prepare her for the WNBA. Once she got the LSU, she continued to excel, achieving numerous double doubles and leading her team in significant victories, including reaching the final four in 2023. Her background story is not just about her achievements, but on the court, but also reflects her strong family ties to basketball, with both parents having played college basketball and her brother playing for the University of Maryland as well. Now, also, Caitlin Clark is an awesome story as well. Like her testament to her like success was all about a combination of talent, dedication, and just perseverance. So born in January, born on January 22nd, 2022 in Des Moines, Iowa, Caitlin started playing basketball at the young age of five. Kind of reminds you of like Tiger Woods, you know, playing golf at the age of three. So her athletic journey wasn't just limited to basketball alone. As a child, she also explored softball, volleyball, soccer, tennis, um, and golf, ultimately focusing her energies on basketball um, from her teenage years. By the age of 13, she was playing all Iowa attack, a AAU basketball program. Caitlin drew inspiration from Maya Moore of the Minnesota Lynx and harbored ad admiration from Harrison Barnes, becoming a North Carolina Tar Heels fan after Barnes joined the program. During her high school career at Dowling Catholic High School in West Des Moines, Iowa, Caitlin was a basketball sensation from her early freshman year. Demonstrating her scoring prowess and versatility on the court, she led the team to significant victories and earned numerous accolades, including being named Iowa Gatorade Player of the Year and making a Class 5A All-State first team multiple times. Her exceptional skills, her exceptional skill set was the second highest single game point total in our history, which ultimately was 60 points, which is just like unheard of. Think of one person scoring 60 points in a high school game. So again, like just an awesome display of talent. Before starting high school, Caitlin was on the radar for NCAA basketball, receiving her first letter of interest before the seventh grade. 
by the end of her high school career, she was ranked as the fifth of a, as a five-star recruit and the fourth best player in her class by ESPN. Although her family had initially hoped she went to Notre Dame, she ultimately committed to the University of Iowa, drawn by that team's up-tempo style of offense and the opportunity for immediate significant play. Once she got to college, her freshman year was marked by impressive performance, including breaking a scoring title um, at the at the Nebraska Pinnacle Bank Arena. Her success on the court has been complemented by her contributions to the U.S. national team, winning gold medals and MVP honors at the FIBA Under-19 Women's World Cup. Caitlin's influence extend beyond her athletic achievements, and she has become one of the top earners among college athletes from name, image, and likeness deals. Whew. That was a lot, bro. I mean, I wanted to make sure that we highlighted their amazing success story because I don't think a lot of us know knew all of that. So I want to kind of just random ask a random question real quick. After hearing all that, because I'm not sure if you knew that. I know I didn't. But after I didn't hearing, know all of that. There was a lot. <laughs> yeah. So after hearing all that, what are your initial thoughts as the consistency coach? That in order for either one of them to get to where they are now, um there was a lot of consistency that had to take place, you know, from starting off. Um, I think you said one of them started playing basketball at five years old. Like that's a long time, you know, from you go from five to 18 to 19, 20, you know, I don't know. They probably about that age, about 20 or 21. So, 22. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's like, <clears throat> that's, that's the majority of your life. And, you know, it's a lot going on with your life over that span of time you know you got if you starting at five you got all of elementary school you got middle school you got high school you got puberty you got bullying you got clicks you got fifth grade girl drama you got all of these things that you have to maneuver and migrate while you're becoming the people that we are talking about today you yeah. know what i mean so in order to get there there had to be a lot of structure. There had to be a lot of discipline and there had to be consistency with doing the routine or the plan or the working out or staying on task over all of these years. So that's just my initial thought is that, you know, they would not have been there without some level of consistency in whatever, whatever plan that they had going on. Like I said, five years old is, that's a lot of time. You know what I mean? Like, yep. That's you, you were really young, you know, yeah. I don't, you know, other than people who get into like sports and stuff and, you know, you really don't see um, doctors really practicing medicine at five years old, right? At five years old, you know, depending on what your dream is, you can go out there and, and kick a soccer ball or shoot a basketball, you know, yeah. you can start developing those physical skills very early on in life, you know, Absolutely. so those Absolutely. my initial thoughts. And, you know, to add to what you're saying, I'm, I'm agreeing from a consistency standpoint, like you got to look at the consistency of their parents as well, because I mean, mm. in, at those ages, right, you got to realize life is still happening as parents. You know what? I don't know. I don't know, like whether both parents worked or whatever, but mm -hmm. like you know, work has to happen. Right. Planning had to have happened for their life to actually be, you know, follow that structure that you talked about. So they mm -hmm. had consistency of a plan which obviously took them to have they needed to have a structure in their way of thinking they need to have a, a a positive outlook on what they were going to achieve or what they could potentially achieve um at the age of and i think that was caitlin at the age of five playing basketball sure i'm not sure if caitlin really wanted to play at that time or that was mm. something that taught to her or shown to her um but nonetheless it was something that she did being a multiple uh sport athlete basketball, uh, soccer, volleyball, like all these things. Uh, mm -hmm. Amy also played volleyball as well. So mm -hmm. that's another thing, like both of them being, you know, playing multiple sports, like there had to be a consistency of support from, you know, family, um, parents, whatever that looks like. And so I like that concept, but I also, I also want to highlight the fact that they had to have the mindset in order to allow those children the flexibility to do the things that they were doing. Look at Angel Reese. Angel Reese started in one school and then went all the way, like go from Maryland to Louisiana. Like, you know, your family is in Maryland, but you decide mm -hmm. you want to go to Louisiana. 
So, you know, parents had to buy into it at the end of the day. So I love stories like this because it helps us to understand that even though we did it one way, we can still, as parents, have a have the flexibility in our thinking. Say, I don't necessarily need them to do it the way I did it, but I want them to do it the way they do it. Just allow us to guide you in that particular perspective. And I'm assuming, because I don't know them, I don't know them personally, I don't know their fam- their, their parents personally, but I'm assuming that there was a lot of guidance, a lot of support, and a lot of structure to kind of lead them along this journey. And that's the thing I want to use to propel us into this conversation as well, because at the end of the day, in order to achieve some degree of of significance, you're going to have to have the right mindset. You're going to have to have a large degree of consistency and you're going to have to have the right support system. Go ahead, bro. All right. So let's let's talk about the mindset piece. Right. As a five year old little girl. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you. I'm trying to figure out where the mindset comes from, right? Is it more of the mindset of the parents when the child is that young or is it the, the, the child? Because yes, a a child may go out there and say, yeah, Hey, I want to go and play basketball. Right. But in order to, for her to be the five-year-old Caitlin Clark into the version she is today, like you said, was it her decision? And I'm not, this is not to, 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 to say anything negative about the parents or make it seem like right. it's something that she didn't want to do. And the parents were trying to live their dream through them. No, 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 nothing like that. Right. What I'm saying, what I'm just simply, what, what my thoughts is, is that until that child have that mindset developed, or maybe the child already does have a mindset that is developed and know that this is what they want to do at five, you know, right. um, or is it more of the parents, not even influencing, but mm-hmm. being the mindset behind the 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 journey. Because like I said, she has to go through puberty. She has to go through fifth right. grade right. drama. She has to go through high school and cliques and all of these different things. Her life doesn't stop. Yep. So, and I know a lot of times with kids, they want to get off the path. They don't necessarily want to stay in something, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, for a bunch of different reasons. So what are your thoughts on that when it comes to the mindset, the parents versus the child at that young of an age? My initial thoughts is that I love that question. And here's why. Because I think children at a certain age, they're sponges. They soak up everything that their parents say and do. And so it's a number of different ways that that could have happened. It could have been that, like I said, their parents may have played basketball, Um, like Angel Reese's parents. Angel Reese's parents played basketball her brother played basketball. So it's like a family um, tradition to play basketball in that particular setting. In Caitlin's Clark partic- in, in scenario, which she played, I believe, at a younger age than Angel Reese, or at least it is documented. Um, it could have been the fact that, you know, Caitlin seeing her parents playing, her parents playing basketball, Caitlin seeing her brother playing basketball. I, I would venture to assume initially that it could have been a brother thing because she played with a lot of boys. But At a real young age, your children see what you do and they literally want to mimic the things that you do a lot of times. Um, But then it could have been the other way around. It could have been that they didn't do that at all. And you had the and I hate to use this term because I don't want to sound sexist, but you could have had the soccer mom concept right to where mom just take the child and put the child in this program. Let's try this program. Let's try this program until you Mm -hmm. find a program that you like. Then once you find a program that you like, then we stick with that one. But in this case, I think Caitlin like liked all of them. You, you see what I'm saying? So now what do you do? You got basketball, you got soccer, you got volleyball, you got tennis, you got all these things. So you have a year round of just athletic events that you're going through. And here's the deal. Going back to, from the mindset to consistency, look at the consistency of the parents. Like you're constantly on the go every Saturday, taking them here. Every oh, man. You know, every practice during the week after work, whatever the case may be. So it could be a combination of all of those things um, because I've seen it. I've seen it when I was in the army because in Texas they did um, pop Warner football. So Mm -hmm. every Saturday the foot, those, those fields be packed with little kids with the helmets on and stuff like that. And I thought it was awesome, but you got to understand that those parents also got to take them to practice. They got to buy the stuff. They got to make sure those kids get physicals and all those other great things. So the mindset behind it could be a combination of both more so from the parents initially, but then the child adopts it. And then after they adopt it, they, they adopt it. 
they run with it. And I think one of the biggest catalysts behind that child adopting that mindset is the excitement that the parent shows behind what they're doing. Mm, yeah, I get that. And I also can relate to them sports, man. <laughs> I, I, man, I, all my sons played sports growing up. And then, you know, my the, the gap between my oldest and my youngest is 10 years. So yeah. my oldest is 28 now and my youngest is, is, is 18. Yeah. But I also got a 22 year old sprinkled in there too. So I remember times when the, you know, the 18 and 22 year old were playing sports and one have a, it was, I mean, they were playing football. They own the same organization, but mm -hmm. they played in two different locations. I remember one day we driving like a 45 minutes to go to one game, come back for a little bit and then drive another hour in another direction for another football game. And this was every Saturday, yeah. you know, and then, you know, if you got parents, you know, if you got kids to run track, that's a that's an all day event. So, you know what I mean? That's they start them. They start them field events eight o'clock in the morning. And mm -hmm. I remember one time one of my sons, he didn't start. Run, he ran one of his events until nine thirty at night. Oh, wow. You know? So it's it's a long days and it is a lot of consistency. It's a lot of dedication. And you got to have a mindset like you, you signed them up for it. You know what I mean? You wanted yeah. your child to go into sports, and that's the that's the other side of it. You know, you gotta have that dedication, consistency, and mindset in order, in order, especially to go to the um to the final four to win the championship and different things like that. Absolutely. Like, it's a long absolutely. journey. Absolutely, absolutely. And and I think that's a great segue into the first question I really want to ask you in relation to that. Um, because when it comes down to you know, looking at the their successes that they've achieved, because you've seen it now literally for the past two years. Um, I've never really heard of Angel Reese until she got to LSU. And I've never heard to mm. heard of Clark until last year when they yep. played LSU. But mm -hmm. but again, that's me because I'm not a I'm not an avid watcher of women's college basketball. But Same. when I when I watched the especially watching the game last year, like they're ballers. Like they're really, really good. So the first question I want to ask you is like, what does it take to develop the mental toughness, agility, and resiliency? Now, I know I got the word mental in there, but you know, it's, this is still a consistency question. Like, what does it take to develop the mental toughness, agility, or resiliency to accomplish extraordinary feats as we've seen in these two young ladies? Man, all they need is consistency. And that's, <laughs> no, that's, that's nothing else, throw out everything else. No, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's you know that, that that that's a given because this is what we talk about on on this show you mm -hmm. know so definitely consistency but man just developing the mental toughness you know even with consistency you have to have a plan you yeah. know what i mean you can't just be consistently doing a bunch of nothing eventually mm -hmm. there's going to have to be a plan that's going to be constructed so you can be consistent with that plan and yes the plan may adjust from time to time but um developing mental toughness i think is sometimes doing um doing things you don't want to do sometimes mm -hmm. you know what i mean like in order to be elite you have to do a lot of things that that, that you have to do what everybody is not willing to do yeah. you know you also have to have some talent you also have to have some genetics you know but i think that you have to do what everybody's not willing to do. And even if you are amongst those handful of people who are willing to do what no one else wants to do, yeah. you still got to do it. And mm -hmm. you got to, you got to be better. You know, yeah. like I'm sure like for them, I'm sure they had four o'clock in the morning, um, wake ups and, um, and gym workouts and going to go swim or just whatever it is that they do in order to be better at what they do. You know, I'm yeah. sure they shot thousands of, of free throws and 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 three pointers. Like, you know, in order, and then you had to, you know, losing games, winning games, falling down in, in practice, getting bumps, you know, charges, you know, all of the bumps and bruises, the 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 sprained ankles, the the jammed fingers, all yeah. of that stuff, you know, together. And then doing it over and over and over again, you know what I mean? All of those things help develop your mental toughness. When you can, 
when you go through things, I think just, and then you get over it. I think just that right there um, helps with your mental toughness and it helps with your um, resiliency. So I just think, you know, doing hard stuff um, and being consistent with the hard stuff and the journey is what is some of the things that helps um, develop the mental toughness, agility, and resilience. You know, I really love your response. Um, it kind of reminds, like you, you were a air traffic controller, right? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, have you ever, have you ever at some point, can you remember like at some point in your career, you didn't want to be that guy? Like you say, I'm not going to be that guy. I want to be good at my job because I don't want to fail. I don't want mm -hmm. to be the cause of something bad happening. Yeah. See, I, rem I remember specifically when it happened for me, because I'll be honest with you, I tried to change my MOS after getting into it. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Like, no, no, you got a star MOS. We need you. So mm -hmm. here's the deal, though. If you want to get out, you can only go here, here, and here. Like, I don't want to do any of those. So I'm like, you know what? Since I got to stay, I need to make sure that I'm good because I don't want to be that guy. And so I look at that and I liken it to this because at the end of the day, we know people who played basketball, football, or whatever. And I think they had that moment as well where they didn't want to be that guy. Like, case in point, everybody knows that Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team. And then mm -hmm. he goes on to be the best basketball player to ever play, pick up a basketball. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the jury is still at because people want to argue differences. I don't care. Michael Jordan. They're wasting their time arguing the anything else. Michael Jordan, the best basketball player ever played basketball, period. That's, yep. my, that's my story. I um, agree. But he failed at something. He failed at one point in time. He literally got cut from the team. So at some point, he had to, he, he, he felt something. Like he went through the pain, the frustration, the self doubt, maybe, um, the self talk that he had with himself. But at some point, he had to get to the point and say, you know what? I can complain about it. I can whine about it. Or I can do something about it. And I think as it pertains to, his mental toughness, he had to overcome whatever he was going through in that moment, whatever he was thinking at that particular point in time to develop a mindset and say, you know what? I am never going to experience this again. I'm never going to be cut from another basketball team again. Not only will I not be cut, I'm going to be the first choice for everybody, even in pickup games. So like you said, I'm sure he went out there and shot thousands of free throws, thousands of layup, thousands of jump shots ran gases all in if you if you play basketball you know gases are ran gases day and night constantly and got in the best physical conditioning that he could possibly get into so the mental toughness overcoming this the the self-defeating kind con of conversations that he was having with himself like catching those negative thoughts whenever they come in his head taking them and throwing it into the fire and say you don't belong here i need that thought that says i am going to be the best basketball player ever and then getting to the point where he navigates life, going around barriers, overcoming obstacles, navigating the obstacle course of life in essence, and then developing the resiliency. Because if you played any type of sports, you're going to get injured. You're going to tweak an ankle. You're going to pull mm -hmm. a hamstring, right? You're going to pull a quad muscle. You're going to hurt your shoulder. You're going to jam your finger. Like all these things happen, right? And at some point, you know, you're going to end up, you know, just getting frustrated because of injury, especially if it's a serious injury, like a knee or something of that nature, and you got to have surgery. So the mental toughness, agility, and resiliency that it takes to achieve something that goes bigger than what you could have ever imagined when you was a child, that takes not only this thing to be sharp, not only for this thing to not be fixed, it has to be agile but it also takes the level of consistency in doing the thing that, that I heard a saying one time and I thought it was amazing, right? It said that amateurs, amateurs practice until they get it right. Right. And then professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. Mm -hmm. And when you really process that, I think that makes perfect sense because you got to realize that Michael Jordan, even when you reflect back to that game he played, I remember he shot the ball and he looked at the side and I think it was uh, um, Spike Lee and he did that with the rim. Like he really felt the rim was that big, like he couldn't miss. And I think that's what practice does. Like you do it constantly over and over again. So just keep, whoever you are, if you're listening to this, practice that thing until you can't get it wrong. 
You remember um, the NCO Creed? No right? one is more professional than I. So, do you? I'm I'm thinking about what you said. Amateurs practice until they can't get forget. It right. They, they, they get, get it right. right. Amateurs practice until they get it right. Professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. So I practiced that NCO Creed until I got it right. <laughs> because like when I was in, I, I knew it and I learned it, but I've been out since 17. So I've been out for a few years, seven years. And I don't know it. I can, I know a lot of it, maybe 60% of it. You know, yeah. I could probably relearn it all within a day or two. You know what I mean? But um, that was funny. That's what I thought about when you were talking. When you were talking about that. Yeah. I thought about the NCO Creed, man. For um, me, for me, there's only one thing I can think about. Like if I'm being completely transparent, it's riding mm -hmm. a bike. When mm -hmm. you were growing up, you rode a bike so many times that if somebody was to put a bike in front of you right now, I bet you you can get on and ride it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't and know how to ride a bike mm -hmm. that's a good one i th you know so you know that's that's funny because when people say um what they say you never forget how to ride a bike what's the saying that goes with that you got you me know how to ride or something i don't know but it's something about a bike <laughs> but anyway um it's like that because it's like once you know how to ride it, unless you had like some sort of injury or or something like that where you lost your memory or something like this, once you learn how to ride a bike, you know how to ride a bike. You don't wake up one day and be like, I can't ride a bike no more. But a lot of stuff declined. Like, you know, we we all used to be in the gym heavily at some time. And Absolutely. They even throw a whole bunch of weight. Well, we can still lift weights, but we can't lift that amount anymore. Right. You know what I mean? We're not being consistent and we, and we definitely don't have that mindset that we want to be the biggest sidewalk cracking joker that's just walking around the streets, you know? Um, yeah. Not anymore. I don't have that mindset. Um, and I definitely don't have that level of consistency because I don't want to do that anymore. So, right. Um, it is what it is, man. Um, yeah. I, 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 I thoroughly enjoy um, just challenging Right, challenging myself, challenging the way I think, challenging me doing something. Like comfort zones to me, um, I enjoy discovering where comfort zones are. Now, don't get me wrong, there are certain things I'm just not going to do that's different. Mm -hmm. I refuse yeah. to jump out, I, I refuse to jump out of an airplane. I refuse to, so that's, not <laughs> my comfort, that's not my comfort zone. That's just what I ain't going to do. That's a decision I have decided. Mm -hmm. I, cut, I cut off all other options to say, hey, you can jump out of this airplane. No, I can't. Mm -hmm. right? However, when it comes down to something I want to do, okay, and I get to the point to where, like, I am feeling a little anxiety because I know I have to punch through this wall to get to what's on the other side. To me, I, I, I enjoy that. I struggle here. I think everybody does, but I enjoy it. And here's why. Because it helps me to understand that there's a lot more that I need to learn. In fact, to be completely honest with you, the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know which keeps me to the point of having an open mind and desiring to learn. That's why I listen to what everybody say. Even when it comes down to these two young ladies, you can imagine like there's only so many ways you can dribble a basketball until yeah. you see Allen Iverson dribble a basketball. I'm like, yeah. how did he do that? How did he dribble a basketball and take it around the back his, you know, and had it in his shirt and never skipped a beat? Like, mm -hmm. it's just like, and it's just like these things as well. So that's what practice does. That's what the, the consistency of practice does. Like being innovative, in just doing a thing over and over again, right? You can come up with different ways to do a thing. And then some people are like, oh my goodness, I've never seen that done before. And I played basketball my whole life. Like imagine the greatest basketball player in the world, Michael Jordan, playing against Allen Iverson, and everybody's seen the video. We've seen it like a hundred times, right? When mm -hmm. he crossed Michael Jordan over and almost, you know what I'm saying? It's like, whoa, Michael Jordan got crossed over by Allen Iverson? Oh yeah. my God. Like, but again, this guy, when he came to the league, he had that mindset. I don't mm -hmm. care who you are. I'm going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, right? Same thing with Kobe Bryant. And I'm excited to see what these two young ladies do when they get to the WNBA because I think they're going to have that same mentality. Yeah. I was looking at some um, some different things. Well, I was listening. You said something. You mentioned Harrison Barnes. He played for UNC. I saw him play yeah. um, a few years ago. He got he got drafted by um, Golden State. I know he was there for a little bit when yeah. – 
NBA championship there. But I was just I was looking in um I was looking at how much NIO money like they're both getting. And I know we were talking about them and other things, but like because of that mindset and because of that consistency over time, like they make a bank. Mm -hmm. Like um Angel is one point eight million and then Caitlin is getting three point one million. Like, you know, they're making money in college. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um and I think I've seen, I think I saw Caitlin Carr. I think I saw on the State Farm commercial yesterday, man. I can pretty much, yeah, she was on the State Farm commercial yesterday. So it's like, man, they all here getting money and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I was looking at their followers, like Angel Reese. She got 2.9 million followers on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Like. So it's like, you know, they, they have done some things with their life, you know, like you said, anybody who's watching, you know, the, the power of, of consistency and the and the and the correct mental state or the correct mindset is is key. You know what I mean? Because th th there are things that some people. I, I want to be clear, so I'm not a firm believer that anybody can do everything. Mm -hmm. anybody can do anything but i will say that when you are consistent and because even though you can be consistent having a great mindset we still can always determine outcomes to a certain extent we can and depend on what arena it is i could be the best baller out there whatever right now that i could go i could be but there ain't a snowball chance in hell that i'm gonna be in the nba anytime soon you know what i'm saying it just ain't going to happen you know, so that wasn't part of my life, you know, but in certain areas of your life, if you are good at something, you can be the best at that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You can be the best at whatever it is that you specialize in and nobody can take that from you. But it's going to take consistency and mindset at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you know, and good luck with, without those two. You know, yes, you know, just like everything else, you got to have excuse me, discipline and some other things going along in there. But um, I think those are important too. Absolutely. Well, well let, let, me, let me ask this because I'm glad you brought that up, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to goal setting, and a lot of times we look at our shortcomings, right? Short, literally for basketball. Um, mm -hmm. We look at our shortcomings. We look at our skill set, things of that nature. Like what does it take to develop the necessary level of consistency needed to break through the barriers to prevent us to break through the barriers that prevent us from achieving greatness. Like I know I'm not going to play basketball. That, mm -hmm. that was never in the plans for me. I'm five foot eight. So never looked at it. Now, don't get me wrong. I played a mean pickup game, but as far as I allowed it to go. Right. But what about that person out there who was on the court, they're playing, they're like maybe five, 10, five, 11, maybe six feet tall. Um, what does it take for that person? And again, it's not just basketball, that we're talking about. So as you guys listen to his response, don't just limit what we're saying to basketball, but we're talking specifically basketball today. What does it take to develop the necessary level of consistency that allows me to break through the barrier that is preventing me from achieving greatness? Mm. One of the biggest things I would say is, is probably accountability and mm -hmm. um, accountability and honesty, you know, because when it comes to goal setting, you have to understand that when when you're lacking in a certain area and you you go out there and you you set a goal, there's a journey or there's a bunch of action that takes place until you get to that goal, you know. And while you're goal setting, if you don't have the consistency, then I think you have to be honest with yourself and say, you know what, I don't have the consistency. So since I don't have the consistency, I need to figure out how I can make myself accountable. So one of the first things I probably need to do is to write down some sort of plan, you yeah. know, write down what the goal is, write down a plan to get to the goal. And then oh, honestly, if you don't have any accountability to yourself, then it may be a good idea for you to hire somebody or connect with somebody who can be keep you accountable, you know, because a lot of times people just don't set goals or people don't get their goals because they're just not accountable. They're not accountable to themselves a lot of times. And that that's a huge barrier. If you can't be accountable to yourself, 
that's that's a huge barrier to yourself, to to your progress, to your future, to any goal that you're trying to set. Yeah. So um, again, I think right off the bat is you have to um, when it comes to goal setting, you have to develop a certain level of personal accountability. And if you don't have accountability, then at this point, depending on how old you are, you probably need to start paying somebody for it because the friend or your wolf pack or the people in your life hasn't haven't helped you. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's not to to crap on anybody's relationship that they have with anybody or else. But what I'm saying is if you if you're still struggling with something that you've been struggling with for 40 years and you have friends around you and they can't help you, not saying that they should help you. Mm -hmm. But if you can't be accountable, your friends can't hold you accountable, your family can't hold you accountable, then maybe at this point you need to go and, and hire somebody that's going to help you be more accountable. Because, you know, one thing they say is when you pay, you pay attention, you know. So having that accountability piece in your life is, as I think, is key. And, and just being honest with yourself, you know, it's not going to it's probably not going to happen overnight. Your level of consistency is not going to happen over tight, overnight. Yeah. It's going to have to get developed. And one of the ways, like I said, way to develop those, I know I'm being redundant, no, 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 is yeah. with honesty and accountability. We need a bell that goes right here. No, I'm sorry, right about here. <laughs> so yeah. every, time, every time we say something that relates to the term coach, like uh -huh. this, this bell will ring. Ooh, so I like, like it. Yeah, I, I, like, I like that. Because I'm agreeing with you. I think we need to understand a couple of things that are at play as it pertains to this. And again, I'm talking mindset that goes along with the consistency, right? Because this is what I know. If I don't necessarily have the mindset to do a particular thing, it's going to be very difficult for me to have the consistency needed to do that thing as well. So I can be responsible for my own behavior, but I'm only going to be irresponsible up to a certain point. And I'm going to view that as success, but the world is going to view that as, okay, good job, right? But then if I want to go beyond this, then that means I need to have accountability partners that push me beyond that. So my my close, my what, 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 I, what I tend to call my inner circle, my closest to close, those are the people that got permission from me, granted, easily, without question. They got permission to challenge my thought process, challenge my perspective, challenge my paradigms. Say, why didn't you do this? I thought you wanted to do that. Whatever happened to you doing this, right? What happens if you do this? Well, let's do this. Remember, just like, well, just like we talked about before, just do one more. You know, don't stop there. Do one more, right? So they have permission to do that. And that can push me a little forward in my success. But when I go find that, that person, right, that's going to make us ring that bell, it's going to be in that corner here, right? That person that we actually call coach, that person is going to challenge my perspective of personal responsibility. He's going to tell me, he or she is going to tell me, why not one more? Why not 10 more? Why not 100 more? You know what I'm saying? So he's going to push my my perspective of challenging me broader. Like Herschel Walker did like what? Average 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups every day. You know what I'm saying? That was his personal responsibility to himself. He even said he didn't lift weights. Well, somebody had to push him to do stuff like that or something. But then when he got to college, his coaches pushed him beyond that. And that's the benefit of having these layers of people in your life that push you through the gates of success because success looks, we say it all the time, success look different from person to person. Well, the reason why success looks different is because some of us view success, personal responsibility, accountability partner, and then people that we pay attention to because we pay them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And now a success for them is up here to where these people here will say, well, you know what? I don't need all that. That's fine. But what you're doing is you're talking yourself at your potential. We got to be careful when we do that. We got to be careful when we make excuses for being average. Now, I'm not calling anybody average. I'm not saying if you choose, you know, just to do a thing and be OK with that, like that's what you choose. I'm not saying that you're a bad person. What I'm saying is that we cannot make excuses for what life has given us, especially if we sit back and accept it. That's the key. If life says, and I, and I just did it a few seconds ago, right? If life says, hey, you're only five foot eight, the average basketball player in the NBA is six foot two. I ain't trying to go to the NBA. So for me, yeah. that was never <laughs> in the cards. So uh -huh. when you compare me to the NBA, I'm like, cool, that's great. But I'm good. Yeah. I'm not trying to get there. However, 
when it comes down to other stuff, the stuff that I said, this is what I want to do. I got people in my corner say, you know what? That PhD looks really good on you. I'm like, yeah, but do I really want to do that? If I do it, what's the cost analysis? So that's how my mind is. It's not that I'm saying no, I'm saying how and why. And that's yeah. a different metric for me because for me to devote an additional four or five years of my life to doing a thing, I want to ensure that if I do it, then I can employ it in this particular fashion. And for me, it's like, how can this help the people? If this can't help the people, but it only helps Fortune 500 com companies, I'm good. I don't know. My even though I enjoy working with Fortune 500 companies, I enjoy more so working with people because that's what the community is all about. So that's kind of like my perspective when it comes down to it. Goal setting, I think we set goals too low, right? We don't really set goals the right way. We should be setting goals that are so far. We should set goals so high that it make your nose bleed to look up at it. That's what I really think. So Hold up, because you 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 challenging a lot of people's thoughts right there. A lot yes, of people's. A lot of times, people will say, "Make sure you set goals that you can achieve initially, so you can achieve those goals, and then later on, once you have built up some success, then you start making those goals bigger." So. I'm just speaking, like I said, a lot of people have heard something contrary to mm -hmm. that big goals. Right. So, um, and, and I've done a, a, a very detailed teaching on this. Mm -hmm. So you want to set a goal for your life that is so big that it really makes you say, how am I going to do that? Like, that's what you want to do. And then what you want to do is backwards plan and you set milestones. Then after setting milestones, you set benchmarks. So those benchmarks will equate to what they were telling them to set. So it's like, say, for example, we're talking about um, coming out of high school, right? I want to be, and you mentioned doctors. So let's just say I want to be a medical doctor, right? Mm -hmm. so I need to go and study. I need to go and do the research and see what do I need to do to become a medical doctor, right? <clears throat> if, if I leave it at that, at medical doctor, that aspiration is too low. That's that's that is a that right there by itself is simply a bench. Well, um, it's a milestone. So getting Amen. my medical degree is a milestone. I should be setting the aspiration of I want to own my own medical practice, have at least 10 other doctors that working for me. And then I want to be able to do blah, 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 blah. So now we're we we're pushing the envelope. We've pushed it all the way out there. So now what do I need to do that? So from there, well, we know I got to get my medical degree, but that's all the way down here. You know? So from there, I need to you know, find a practice, find out what I want to specialize in, do this and do that, do that. So you have certain things that you got to do to get to here. And then mm -hmm. those become the benchmarks. I mean, those become the milestones that you have to accomplish along the way. Those milestones, they only serve as guidelines to help you to understand that you're getting closer to that bigger goal benchmarks right with under the uh i'm sorry milestones under the benchmarks they only serve as i probably said it backwards again they only serve as again guidelines helping me to know that i'm getting there so i have to get an undergraduate degree cool i'm getting closer i got to get a graduate degree cool i'm getting closer i got to do this i got to do x amount of hours i got to do internship i got to do you see what i'm saying so now those things serve as stepping stones to ensure that we get all the get closer to that aspiration. It may take you 40 years to achieve the big dream, the aspiration itself. I call that Moby Dick, right? It may take you years to get there, but that's okay. If I only focus on that, I'm going to talk myself out of it because I don't have enough faith within me at the age of 18 for that. But the benchmarks and the milestones is where I can capture those small wins incrementally along the way. And that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I got it. I got it, man. Cause <clears throat> goals are goals are goals are something else, man. And I think what happens quite too often in life is people don't even set goals. Um, I think if we was to poll the average American, say, "Hey, what what tangible goals or what what goals? What, what what are your top three goals?" I would think that a lot of people wouldn't have them. Would they say, "Oh yeah, well, 
I want to do this and I want to do this, but it's probably not really anything that's really thought out or, or planned out. Um, and that's just based off of what I see on, on social media and just my, just my overall perception, just interacting with people and just having conversations with people. Um, but I do think that it is important. I think that you can be a lot more successful, whatever that looks like for you. If you have a plan, if you have something um, written down or something that you can see that a map at the mm -hmm. end of the day, just a map. That's yeah. all it is. You know what I mean? It's no different than a map. You know, I'm going to get to I'm at point A and I need to get to point B. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? How do I get there? I know right now. Well, I get if, if I if I if I need to go from North Carolina to Georgia to go visit coach. The first thing I need, like you said, is I need the endpoint, right? So I need your address. Then I got a backwards plan from there, which I ain't got to do a whole bunch of backward planning anymore. Now I got to do is just type it in the GPS. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Type it in my phone, you know, or the or the Tom Tom if they still make those. They still make Tom Tom. Oh my God, you went way back, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> man. Bro, you remember hit that Tom Tom with that Garmin? Yeah, I remember that. Bro, when I hit one of them, yeah, man. I remember you could plug it in the cigarette lighter, but then you had to update it mm -hmm. every so often or something like that. Then you had to pay for like the updates or something. Man. something that but that was like the best thing because that got rid of the big old Atlas maps. That's true. That I used to drive around with in my truck, in my car. That's old school. Right there. It's old school there, but here, here's the good thing about that though. Or that's how we... I think what, what a lot of people do now is they're they're typing in the GPS how to get somewhere in life. They say, hey, I want to be in, I'm in point A and I want to be in point B. And they just think it's, it's, it's as easy as just putting it in the GPS. But I mean, back in the day, man, we used to have to write them definitions down. Yep. I mean, the, the directions down. We have to think about, you know, really certain things like five o'clock traffic. You know yep. what I mean? Or yep. either. You know, just a whole bunch of things. I just remember writing down those directions and then looking at them. You know, I write them down. I'm on the road, you know, over there looking at them and stuff. And I was a lot more engaged in my route and the driving because I was so much invested in it. Because, like I said, I had written it down. I thought about it. I looked at the atlas from the state view and then i looked at it from the city view you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and now you just type it in you just you know you're drinking your your coffee and you know you're just driving along you're not even really paying attention to the gps yeah. you know what i mean unless you get a notification or you see that big long line of red that yeah. you know is about to be busy in some traffic exactly but Here, here's, you know, here's, here's the beautiful part about it right um yeah. most people don't realize that that's how gps technology works it mm -hmm. does not plot the course from you to the destination it plots the course from the destination to you mm. so it works backwards and in mm. essence when it does that when it does that it is really like it is really a metaphor for how you should be living your life mm -hmm. like you should live your life from your aspiration backwards and then you just follow the plot along and here's the funny part about it like you were saying if you wanted to travel from north carolina to georgia you just plot the course and you mm -hmm. start well, yeah. don't be surprised, right, when you're driving along, not you, but I'm just saying in life. Yeah. Don't be surprised when you're driving along the road in life and you get a flat tire. Yeah. Do you, do you just sit there and wait on somebody to come and, you know, do roadside assistance? Or do mm -hmm. you get out, change your tire, put the spare on and just keep marching along? Yeah. So that's, a, you know, that's that resiliency part to it. I think where we missed the mark at, right, I think we missed the mark with goal setting by not teaching our children how to set goals. Mm. We don't teach goal setting at a young age. So kind of going back to Caitlin Clark, Clark playing all these sports, right? Well, part of that goal setting teaching should be watch me as I set goals. Let me, if, if you were me, what would you do here? What would be your choice? Which one of these would you decide to do? Why would you choose that one? And not, not, and not why from a perspective of that you're wrong and make sure that you explain to them, like, I just want to know what your line of thinking was behind choosing that one. Why well, chose that one, dad? Because it, it's cute. I like the colors for that one. That's probably what it's going to start off with. Why? Because they're very visual and tactile creatures at a young age. It's not a whole lot of it's not a whole lot of 
cognition happens like, oh, that's pretty. I want that one. Right. But then when you start getting them to fire, getting them to fire and wire. Right. So you start giving them things to think about, teaching them how to think, not teaching them what to think, which is what the school system is going to do to them. So you start teaching them how to fire and wire their own, their own brain. Then it becomes, oh, now they're, they're not the linear thinker that I talked about previously. They're more to the point where they're non-contiguous thinkers. I don't necessarily need this to line up with this in order for me to decide on this. And that becomes the thing that we can teach at home. We can teach our children at home how to set effective goals for their lives. Then when they become adults, we'll find that they become successful early and they start thriving faster. And I got to look that word up later on. What's that? What's that? Non to non to what? Non to it was not non contiguous. It just means that it's not, it, just, it just means that it's separate. It's not <laughs> it's like nothing else. <laughs> like man, we bro got them big old words over here. Shoot, oh, my but that's good though. Man, what you think? Of, um, so you know, it's been a long road. It's been a long journey. I think both of them are at the end of their careers as far as college basketball. You mm -hmm. know what I mean for the most part. So. Um, every time that we go from one place in life to the next place in, in life, I think sometimes our mind chef, our mindset shifts or adjusts some. So what do you think is some of the things that they're going to have to deal with when it comes to mind? And I know we're just speaking as, yep. you know, common folk, not people who got, multi-million dollars and about to be you know who are on tv and superstars and stuff yet you know so it's like what what are some things that you think that they have to um probably deal with from a mental standpoint going to um going to the next journey you know and i and i guess i say that as in relation to as a um a teenager or someone that may be just graduating college and they're about to go out there and they're about to go and start their life where it looks a totally totally different. So what would you what would you kind of say to these people, you know, when it comes to their their mental stability and their mindset um after college or like after this portion of their life? I think life in essence is just a succession of repeating the same thing over and over again. It's just at a higher scale. So when you're in elementary school, you're gonna graduate. And I don't, I don't even know if they do school like this anymore. It's how this was like when I went to school, right? Mm -hmm. You go from elementary school to middle school, and then from middle school to high school. In most cases, you're traveling with the same people, right? Yeah. You're just a little older. You know, some people blossom a little faster than others, right? Some people get taller. Some people get bigger. You know, all kinds of stuff like that. So it's just a transition, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the funny part about it. Every transition you go through, you go back to what you had to go through in the beginning of the last transition. You're trying to figure a couple of things out. Do I do I go into the major leagues thinking I'm a five star? Well, guess what? Everybody's five stars, right? Am I the best of the best? Well, guess what? All of these are the best of the best. That's why they're in the major leagues. So one of the biggest challenges that I think most of us encounter when it comes down to going into a new environment is found in the develop the team, um, um, the stages of team development, right? So first thing is forming. When we get there, it's like I want to fit in, or do I go there like uh, what's the Jamie Fox did on um, um, any given Sunday? Will it be mm -hmm. me? He went into the he went into the league to that team thinking he was the best of the best, right? And then he failed miserably in the beginning, but then when he figured it out that he needed to humble himself just a little bit. Right. You can still showcase your talents, but do it on the field, do it on the court, not in the locker room. You don't make your team players feel inferior to you when they're looking at you like you, you know, like you just got out of diapers. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you go in there humble, wanting to add to the team, not make the team serve you, then I think everything will be fine. So initially the forming stage, you go in with anxiety. I want to understand how I fit in. I want to understand how I can help the team win. Right. And then it's going to be some tension because now we're getting into storming. Right. And, it, and, you know, when when storming happens, unfortunately, coaches are probably going to let it happen just a little bit. Why? Because that's what leaders do. You're supposed to let it happen because that tension, once you overcome it, then it creates a bond. Now you're getting to Norman. Now you're getting to the point that you start having 
care and concern for your, your teammates. You start understanding who their family members are, you know, who they hang out with. Y'all start hanging out together as well. And then you get to performing to where you guys are firing on all cylinders. You're operating like a well-oiled machine, right? The last stage, in most cases, it doesn't apply unless we're talking a project team that's actually put together for a particular reason. So I think during that transition, just remain humble, right? Go back to your family roots, remain humble. Don't, don't, don't try to hide your talent. Use your talent to help the team because that's why you're there. If you use your talent as a means to help the team succeed, as opposed to using your talents to overshadow the team and make them serve you, I think the team will embrace you out the gate. They already know who you are. They've seen you play college ball. Most of them like, I can't wait till you show up, right? So when you show up, be grateful, be, be, you know, you know, go in there like it's an honor to be a part of the team. And I think everything is going to be fine for those two young ladies and every other young person that goes through those transitions. All right. So we bought the end of the show and we're going to end it with some actionable advice. So actionable advice is just some advice that we would like to leave with you guys with and some action behind it. So it's not just a thought process. It's something that you actually need to do. So what I'm going to start with my actionable advice for this week is to just find an accountability partner. Right. Hopefully. It's you. But if you if it's not you, then find one. Look through your Rolodex. I'm a dating myself right now, but look through your Rolodex or look through your, your friends list on Facebook of somebody and reach out to somebody who you know is disciplined, someone who's going to be honest with you about any information and just go out there and look for somebody who's going to keep you in, and hold you accountable. Um, I would say that if you are past that stage in your life and, and you already have everything um, going on, then challenge yourself. And what I mean by challenge yourself is um, put yourself on punishment, you know? And what I mean by that is create a list of one or two different things and then maintain them for a certain level of consistency throughout the week, whether it be two days, three days, one day, or whatever. And then um, if you don't do it, then put yourself on punishment for something. So that's my actual advice for this week. I love it. I love it. Put yourself on punishment. Um, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a challenge you. Um, for those of you who are listening, I'm talking to you. Yep. I'm talking to you, whatever your goals is. And I want you to kind of ask yourself right now, what is my goal? Write it down. I am going to challenge you right now. Whatever you write down is too small. So whatever it is, raise it up. If you're just focusing on getting to the next step, no. What is it that you want out of life when your life let's just say for an example if your life ended tomorrow what is it that you wanted to have achieved that should be the goal whatever that last thing is that you want, i want to do this before i pass this is this is the mark that i want to leave on the world that should be your goal and then backwards plan from there so my actionable advice is to elevate the idea of your goal if you have a lofty goal already still too small raise it up you still got time. Elevate it. Make it higher. Don't move it from to a different arena. Take it higher. Like if you want to own your own practice, you want to own your own salon, you want to own your own whatever, like raise it up. Why not a chain of salons? Why not? You see what I'm saying? Like raise it up. Do more. Be more. Now, here's the best part about it. Once you do that, then ask yourself and be completely transparent. Be honest. Who do I need to be in order to achieve that? That's the key. Who does that person in me look like? And then that's the person that is waiting at the finish line for you to arrive. So now your responsibility is to become the person that can achieve that goal, that lofty goal that you created within yourself. That's your destiny. You're supposed to be that person. So you got to go on a mental journey, not just, not just a physical journey, but a mental journey in order to get to the place to where you can stand proudly of your accomplishment, ready and willing to give to any and everybody that come to you for advice, because now you are an accountability partner at that level. In fact, you're going to be accountability partners along the way, and you're going to have accountability partners. But once you get here, you're going to be an accountability partner to a mass of people. That's my actionable advice for this week. Man, I like it. 
And if we are about to wrap up the show for the day, um, you can, again, you can tune in next week, seven o'clock PM on Tuesdays, and we'll be back with another conversation. Um, also, if you would like to know more about myself or coach, then you can go to total and you can get in contact with um, Dwayne, or you can go to build and you can get in contact with me. And until next week, we are out. <laughs>